Recently, the government published a white paper called A Fairer Private Rented Sector. And it doesn't sound that exciting, the government publishes things all the time, but this is what we'd been waiting for for years. So many proposals that had been spoken about for ages were finally confirmed as happening in this white paper. There's some things in there that we knew were gonna be coming. There's others that we frankly had no idea about, but there's lots in there that you need to know about as an investor. So in this video, I'm gonna share the five most important things from this white paper and give you an idea of what they may mean for you. So let's get into it. Number one, fixed terms are dead. Those six month, 12 month ASTs that you're used to issuing, no more. There is no length to tenancies anymore. They're periodic from the start, which means they just run month to month with no defined end date. Somebody has to take a defined action to end the tenancy. What can that action be? Well, for tenants, they just need to give two months notice and they can give this two months notice at any time, including the day they move in. For landlords, not quite the same situation. Landlords can't end the tenancy for any reason within the first six months, then after the first six months, they must give a specific reason to end the tenancy. And we'll come to those reasons in a minute, but this is a big change. Number two, no fault evictions are also dead. So previously you could just wait until a tenancy was coming to an end and say that you wanted it to end for no particular reason. You just didn't want to renew it. That's known as section 21. Now you can't do that because there is no end as we've just seen. So the only way as a landlord you can end a tenancy is to give a valid reason. Now those reasons can be various things. There's a couple of new ones that have been added because you now have to give a reason and you can't be no reason. So one of those reasons is you want to move back into the property yourself or move a family member in there. Another reason is you want to sell the property. So in those situations you can get the property back but you do need to prove that that is your reason. Now what if it's not to do with your circumstances but because the tenant isn't holding up their side of the bargain? Well there are reasons around antisocial behaviour and damaging the property and things like that but rent arrears has always been a problem because it's been very difficult to prove in court that there are rent arrears so it's often easier to just wait till the end of the tenancy and use the no fault route. Now you can't do that but a new ground for eviction is being introduced which is around persistent rent arrears. So if a tenant has been in a at least two months arrears three times within three years then that means that the courts have to grant you possession. So even if all those arrears have been cleared by the time the court date happens the court still needs to give you possession. So that is an improvement but that's still something that some landlords are going to be concerned about. Number three, rent increases are being limited to once per year. You can do it once a year and you have to give two months notice of doing it. Also tenants can challenge excessive rent arrears. What's excessive? I don't know, but they can go and challenge it in a tribunal if they want to. But the good news is that the government confirm in the white paper that they're not interested in implementing rent controls. So at the start of the tenancy, you can set the rent to whatever you want. Number four, there are gonna be more compliance obligations. Didn't quite have enough paperwork? Well, good news, there's more. So the first change is that all landlords must join an ombudsman scheme. So at the moment, all letting agents have to be part of an ombudsman. So if they do something wrong, tenants have got some kind of route of recourse. Landlords though, if you're renting from a private landlord, you don't really have that. So that's why this requirement to join an ombudsman is coming in, kind of makes sense. The other change is that information about every property has to be listed on a new digital property portal. So the idea is things like gas safety certificates and electrical checks and all that kind of thing is uploaded somewhere centrally where it can be viewed by presumably the local authority and tenants, perhaps prospective tenants. There's not a lot of detail around this, but this is something that supposedly is gonna happen. And finally, number five, consent for pets. You now as a landlord cannot unreasonably withhold consent for a tenant to get a pet. What is reasonable and unreasonable? I don't know, but you can't withhold it. You can, of course, at the start of a tenancy, choose whether you want to rent to someone with pets or not. If you do choose to rent to someone who has a pet, or if someone wants to get a pet during a tenancy, you can insist on them taking out pet insurance as a condition of the tenancy. The idea being, if there is then extra damage as a result of the pets living in that property, you will then be able to claim, or rather they will be able to claim and pay out to you. 
So in a minute, we'll get to some likely implications of this. But first, when's this gonna happen? That's pretty important. Well, it's important to be aware that at the moment, this is just a white paper. It hasn't been introduced to parliament yet. It needs to go through parliament, have several readings. That is gonna take some time and it depends on how much else is going on as to how long that process will take. Once that process has completed and parliament has approved the bill, at that stage, there's gonna be at least six months notice before the first transition happens. And and that is all new tenancies being of the new type. In other words, having no end date being periodic from the start. Then there's gonna be a second date where all existing tenancies are going to transfer over to the new type. So it's not gonna be the case that all existing tenancies just get to play out until the end and then it's the new one. There will be a date when everything switches, but that date isn't gonna be for a while because first of all, it has to go all the way through parliament. Then there's a six month notice of stage one and then you get stage two. So it's good to be aware of all this now but the actual impact of it isn't going to be for a while yet. So that's a lot. Um, what does it all mean? What's going to happen? Well I'm going to complain about a few things but before I do I'll just say that I'm generally pro-reform. Renting a property in the UK is a terrible experience. It is rubbish and there are things that should be done and can be done to make it less rubbish and I'm all for that and there's actually a lot of very sensible stuff in this white paper. I think a lot of property investors have a knee-jerk reaction to anything that they perceive as shifting the balance of power and I don't think that's right but there are specific things in here that I think are concerning or at least have there's the opportunity to improve them before this actually becomes law. The first point and for me the most important one is the ability for tenants to move in and immediately give notice and then move out again two months later. They can effectively use a property for short-term accommodation, lie and say that they want to stay there long-term, and there's not really any comeback there. And that leaves landlords having to find all the costs of setting up a new tenancy all over again. I don't see why there shouldn't be a minimum six month term in the same way as there is for landlords. Having more flexibility and having greater security is all great and that's fine, but I don't think anyone's crying out to have two month tenancies. So why you wouldn't just remove that loophole by having the six months binding on both sides, I don't know. And perhaps that'll change by the time this becomes law. A second point that people are concerned about is the impact on student lets, because for student properties, you'll often line up tenants for the next September, way earlier in the year, because you'll know that the previous tenants are gonna move out in June or July or whenever it is, and that tenancy has a defined end date, so you know it's gonna happen. Now, that's gonna be difficult to do because the previous tenants are not gonna have an end date. They can say when they're thinking about moving out, but if they change their mind, they decide to stay on longer, they decide to stay for another year, they can do that. So it's gonna be tricky to line up tenancies in advance, and I don't know how the sector is going to adapt to that. And thirdly, and finally, something that many investors are gonna be very concerned about is the removal of no-fault evictions because previously they were used often in situations where there was fault, but it was just the quickest way to bring a tenancy to the end. If you were trying to prove fault, you had to use a different court process, which can take a very, very long time. Now, court reform has been promised as part of this white paper, and they're talking about ways of speeding the process up. And I spoke earlier about a way that it's going to be easier to evict on the grounds of rent arrears. So there are positives in there, but to what extent is that going to happen? Governments often say they're gonna do things and have an intention to do it, but the reality doesn't stack up. If courts are not reformed, and it does take a really long time to get any kind of possession proceedings through, that is going to cause problems. So as a principle, fine, you shouldn't be able to end a tenancy for no reason. And there are reasons in law that are perfectly good ones. So great, you just use one of those. But if it takes months and months and months to go through the courts and prove those reasons, that is a problem. So we're going to have to wait and see how that plays out. So that's the white paper. There's a lot in there and you're gonna have an opinion about something. So let us know what you think in the comments. But before you do that, make sure you're subscribed to The Property Podcast because on its journey to becoming law, we're gonna follow this all the way. So we will update you on timings, any changes that are made, everything that you need to know as this big change becomes reality. So there's a new episode every Thursday. All you need to do is search Property Podcast wherever you listen.